And we bring in Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office insider. He also has a mock draft that just came out yesterday. Let me start with the kickoff. And as a former executive, how does this change your draft philosophy, if anything, this year? Great question, Dan. You know, what's interesting is I think we saw the yes, uh, answer yesterday. We saw Correll Patterson be reunited with Arthur Smith in Pittsburgh. So I think that's the tip of the iceberg. I think we get into that third and fourth round, and I think we're going to see players that have returnability get the benefit of the doubt because make no mistake about it, the kickoff is back. Is it easier or tougher to return a kick for a touchdown now? I think it's going to be harder. Actually, I think what we're going to be looking at, Dan, is really more of like a running play where – it's going to be a much more compressed area and the blocking, you know, it's starting at five yards, but that will quickly compress. So you're going to be looking for guys that have quick change of direction, ability to break a tackle. Um, I think what we'll see is like good kickoff returns. I don't think we're going to see dynamic game changing plays. You only have up to two returns back there. So, um, but I think it's a material improvement over where we were. All right. Run us through your mock draft. So, you know, the highlights are this, you know, I, I have Caleb Williams going on to Chicago. I have Drake May slightly over Jaden Daniels, two and three. The interesting thing that drove a lot of engagement yesterday is, and to me, to be candid, Dan, this isn't an easy decision. I'm taking J.J. McCarthy for the Arizona Cardinals, 21 years old, 27-1 as a starter, 6'2", 219. He's thrown for almost 50 touchdowns, run for another 1,000. He has incredible leadership. I've probably been to a dozen of their practices over the last few years, countless games. He has it all. And more importantly, if you and I were running a team and I told you we could have a 21-year-old J.J. McCarthy compared to a 27-year-old Kyle Murray, one guy is going to be making $27 million more than the other. And last year, Kyle Murray missed nine games, hasn't played in a full season since 2020. So basically, McCarthy's younger. $27 $27 million per year cheaper, Dan, and more durable. Why wouldn't we do that? Why would Minnesota want to take Kyler Murray? Because he's better than Sam Darnold. And when you look at Kyle Murray, he's nine years younger than Kirk Cousins, and the contract they would be inheriting, including the guaranteed money for two years, it's roughly 70. So they're paying him 35 a year. Kirk Cousins is getting 45. So now if I'm the GM of the Vikings, I can look at the Will family and say, hey, we just got nine years younger than Kirk Cousins and $10 million a year cheaper. Give me the quarterback that makes you nervous in this draft. Well, Penix, for one reason, you know, he, he's really talented, but, you know, missed multiple year season, any injuries, a couple of ACLs, a shoulder injury. But in fairness, he's played without any injuries the last couple of years at Washington. The other one is Jaden Daniels. You know, um, I see Herm Edwards all the time at your old place, ESPN and Jaden Daniels was a 180-pound freshman at Arizona State. And you know, Dan, the rigors of a 17-game season, that would concern me. How tough is it for somebody to put on weight once they get to the NFL at that position? Well, well I was going to say, the front office, it was really easy for me. I, mean, <laughs> I, I probably led the league in, in weight gain. In fact, there's a great story when Bill Belichick's the defensive coordinator of the Jets, and it's Scott Pioli, Mangini, Todd Haley, Charlie Weiss, and we're in his office, and he's like, hey, we all need to lose weight. I'm in debt at the time. I'm paying off my law school loan, so I'm like, coach, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, $50 a week. He's like, that's not enough. And I turned to Mangini, I'm like, I'll cut a freaking appendage off. I can't afford more than $50 a week. And this whole legend of us being in the sauna. So besides, you know, carb-loving, you know, compulsive eating front office people, you can actually add good weight at the quarterback position in the NFL. You know, you look at a guy like Jalen Hurts, like he's an NFL body. You know, it's the old coach for ourselves. Look from the waist down. Look at their ass. Look at their hips. Look at their quads. That's how you have sustainability. You know, Justin Herbert has it. Certainly, again, Jalen Hurts has it. But you, you could ask Cincinnati. You could ask Minnesota. You could ask a whole bunch of teams what it's like not to have your quarterback. And I'll tell you what, like, I think Jaden Daniels is dynamic. He played great last year, but Dan, his build does worry me. Let me go back to Belichick since you know him. Um, How do you think he would do as a color analyst during a game or say in a studio, uh, you know, pre and post game analyst? Shockingly good because 
it's amazing what he sees that we don't. Um, and he has a tremendous sense of humor. I'm just telling you, like, you know, he always defined the job, Dan, as like coaching his team. And he felt like his approach to the media was like, they're not going to, if we win, I'm going to stay. If we lose, I'm not going to be here. So the media is irrelevant. And he just never thought it was worth the time for him to show his personality. I think he would be outstanding um, given his insight. And I'm telling you what, he's a lot funnier than you realize. Well, it's interesting that it depends on your job title, how funny you are. If you're a comedian and you say something, people automatically laugh. If you're the greatest football coach of all time and you say something and everybody laughs because people might not laugh at Bill Belichick now because he doesn't have a job. But when he's the coach of the Patriots and you're winning Super Bowls, it's like everything he says is, oh, my God, it's a side splitting. And the number of people who told me, man, he's got a great sense of humor. All right. I've never seen it, never heard it. But you're saying he would be able to unleash that if he was going to be in TV. Yeah, I'd say it a different way. You can't coach at the level he's coached at for 48 years, not to be relatable to a whole disparate group of people from owners to undrafted free agents to you know, equipment people to start, you know, th this guy's coached everybody under the sun. And I'm not just saying that's a sense of humor, but relatability yeah. um, to be able to get your message across for almost 50 years, Dan, you really need to have people skills that, again, most people have never seen. Mike Tannenbaum is a mock draft available at ESPN.com, uh, NFL front office insider. All right. I have this scenario. Now I have a friend who's a scout and he said, he thinks Harbaugh is going offensive line because Jim wants to once again build his team the way it's Michigan team, his Stanford team, his 49er team. And I'm thinking you got the number five pick. You got all of this. Justin Herbert lost all of his receivers. Now you can go out and get Marvin Harrison if you want him. You can have any receiver, Brock Bowers. And my source said he sees him taking you know, alt from Notre Dame. What do you think? 1,000% agree. That's exactly why I have them taking. And here's why. The most important sign so far this offseason is Saquon Barkley, but not for the reasons people think. Jalen Hurts ran the ball 491 times, Dan, over the last few years, most of any quarterback. He was hurt last year. Saquon Barkley is going to make Jalen Hurts healthy. Jim Harbaugh is going to make Justin Herbert healthy. They're going to run the ball. Justin Herbert's going to be healthy at the end of the season. They're going to be balanced. and Jim has a mindset that I had with Rex. Like, there were points in the game where Rex is like, hey, Brian Schottenheimer, I'm telling the other team we're going to run the ball, and we're still – they're not going to stop us. So this first pick to me is way more about is it a receiver, is it an offensive line? This is who we stand for. We're the new Chargers. We're the toughest team in the NFL, and it starts up front. And ironically, I have Joe Alt going there for the same reasons. Yeah. Would you rather have an all-pro tackle and all-pro wide receiver? Oh, the tackle. You know, receivers are just easier to find. It's just supply and demand. Uh, the way seven on sevens played at the youth sports level now, receivers are coming out, and that's why they're going to get, you know, pushed down and they're going to lose the benefit of the doubt. And we're going to see, you know, quarterbacks and offensive linemen and, you know, some of these defense players go probably a little bit sooner than they should. Why haven't the Bears announced that they're taking Caleb Williams? That's a good question. I, I would, I would have not left LA without saying, Hey, here's the playbook. Be ready to go. Here's the first mini camp. And then, um, you know, here's a place to live. You know, you got three different places and, and let's go. I, I don't know what they're waiting for. They're clearly going to take him. And I don't know what the downside is to like, let's go. Let's, let's get this train running. I wonder though, would the NFL suggest, encourage the bears to not spoil the draft? Like, we still have a big runway here until that night. Let's leave open the possibility, you know, because this has been talk show fodder of are the Bears going to take Caleb Williams? And the longer they wait to not announce they're taking him, the more this ramps up again. So maybe the NFL says that. Do you, Have they done that before? Yeah, I think there has been like embargoes on when, you know, different people get information when they can announce it. There's obviously massive value that the league sits on. Um, I don't know if that really applies to this situation. And even if you don't announce it publicly, you know, my expectations for him is like from day one, practice one, mini camp one, like you're QB one and we expect you to have a mastery level, understand the offense. So start studying it right now. 
Good stuff. Did you hear from the Cardinals or Vikings after your uh, mock draft? Yeah, I heard from a number of friends in the league, and uh, you know, so, so, some agreed, and, and shockingly, Dan, not, not everybody. So, you know, more work to be done. Good to talk to you. Thank you, Mike. All right, All right. thanks for having me. That's uh, Mike T. Mike Tannenbaum, ESPN NFL front office insider. And- 